Hi everyone, this is Unit 2, Lesson 8, which is Part 1 of Algebraic Logic. If you'd like to read the learning goals, you may pause the video at any moment to do so. Let's first get started with properties of equality. Okay, take a look at all these different properties. They look kind of crazy. They have long names, but there's nothing to be alarmed of. Most of these are just common sense and things that you've done, but we've just put a name with them. Okay, check out the addition property of equality. It just basically says that if A equals B, then if we do A plus C, that'll be equal to B plus C. Take the time to look at all the different properties of equalities. You can see in almost all of these we've done something with the letter C. For each of them it doesn't matter what we've done with C. Like for instance, the first one, we did plus C plus C. But it doesn't matter because A equals B. And if we add, let's say that, let's say that C is 4. Okay, well if I do A plus 4 and then B plus 4, and if at the very beginning you told me that A equals B, well then I, it doesn't matter how much I add to A or ha add to B. A will still equal B. The same way goes with subtraction. It doesn't matter what you subtract from either one of them. As long as they're equal to begin with, they'll still be equal. The same goes for multiplication and division. Now the substitution property of equality. Notice it says that if A equals B, then B can be substituted for A in any expression. So if A equals B, then that means that I can put B in for A, making the statement B equals B. Or vice versa. If I know that A is equal to B, then I can plug in an A for the B, making it A equals A. Let's take a look at the reflexive property. The reflexive property of equality basically says that A is equal to A. Okay, so the examples will be 17 is equal to 17. X plus 7 is equal to X plus 7. Q is equal to Q. The measure of line segment AB is equal to the measure of line segment AB. Something is always equal to itself. Okay, the reflexive property of congruence is the same thing, but instead of using the equal sign like we did here, we're now going to use the congruence sign. So congruence is just basically the equal sign with a tilde above it. So in these examples, line segment AB would be congruent to line segment AB. And angle QRS is congruent to angle QRS. The symmetric property, it says that if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. We just flip them. So for the examples, we're saying if Y is equal to 6, then 6 is equal to Y. Another example, if G plus 9 is equal to 15, then 15 is equal to G plus 9. We just flip the order. The symmetric property of congruence, again, is the same thing, but we're using the symbol for congruent rather than the equal sign. So if angle C is congruent to angle D, then angle D is congruent to angle C. The transitive property. The transitive property of equality basically says that if A is equal to B, and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. So let's take a look. With this example, let's say that this is Sue. Bob. And Pat. So what they're saying with this picture is, if Sue's height is equal to Bob's height, and Bob's height is equal to Pat's height, then we're able to conclude that Sue is equal to Pat. 
examples of that would be if s plus 7 is equal to t and t is equal to 9, then I know that s plus 7 is equal to 9. Another example, a plus 7 is equal to r minus 10. And r minus 10 is equal to d plus 9. Then a plus 7, which is what we had at the beginning, would then be equal to d plus 9. One more example, if line segment CD is congruent to line segment ST, and line segment ST is congruent to line segment YZ, then I'm able to conclude that CD, line segment CD, is congruent to line segment YZ. Okay, let's look at these examples. It wants us to name the property. So number one, it says, if 6x equals 24, then x is equal to 4. So basically, I need to take a look. What did I do with the 6x and the 24 in order to get the x equals 4? Well, all I did was divide by 6. Therefore, I know that this was true by the division property. Division property and you can put, if you'd like, the division property of equality. Okay, number two, if angle A is congruent to angle two, and angle two is congruent to angle three, then I know that angle one is, equal, is congruent to angle three. This is an example of the last one that we just got through doing the previous slide, which was the transitive property. Number three, if x plus y equals seven and x is equal to three, then three plus y equals z. Now, I start out with the statement x plus y equals 7. Well, then I was told that x equals 3. So what I did was I put the 3 in for the x. Or in other terms, I substituted the 3 in for the x. And I got 3 plus y equals z. So this would be an example of the substitution property. The last one, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. There's symmetry between these two statements. This is an example of the symmetric property. Okay, on these examples it says number one, based on the subtraction property, if the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 90 degrees, then, well since this is the subtraction property, or they're wanting me to use the subtraction property, I know I'm going to subtract. So let's do this problem first by subtracting the measure of angle two. And remember from algebra, what I do on one side, I have to do to the other. So once I subtract the measure of angle two, I'm left with the measure of angle one is equal to 90 degrees minus the measure of angle two. Another way of doing this is if I were to subtract the measure of angle one from 90. And in that case, I would have left the measure of angle two on the left-hand side. So what I would end up with the measure of angle two 
is equal to 90 degrees minus the measure of angle 1. Now, I realize that we're left with two different equations, but both of these both of these could be choices for using the subtraction property on that original equation. Both of these are true. Now number two, it says based on the symmetric property of equality, AB is equal to XY. Well then, all the symmetric property is doing is flipping them, making it be XY is equal to AB. Again, most of these properties are fairly simple, but I suggest writing down the common ones and little notes with them so that way that you can keep them handy for all quizzes and tests.